So I think we're going to start um, and just a very short intro and the Chazan is then going to sing Esa Enai, uh, which is something we have sung before um, Psalm 120, one of my favorite songs and also a psalm that uh, really cries out for hope and hope that uh, God uh, will give us the support that we need. And um, I've been thinking a lot about uh, what happened uh, in uh, Meron. And I think starting with this psalm uh, is an appropriate mood setter. So, um, trying to create the picture in Meron, I think a lot of you have heard this already. Um, when I heard what happened, I immediately thought back to 1980 when I was there on the one-year program at Hebrew University, went up there with friends. Um, back then, I, I think as it is now, or was, a real kind of party atmosphere, a break on Lagba Omer for people who really observe the uh, traditions in a very strict way, it's really kind of letting go completely. You know, I make jokes about like shaving your beard and getting haircuts, but for people who follow that, it's, an, it's uh, including myself for certain things, it's a, it's a real break. That's why there are weddings uh, traditionally on that day um, as well. So the people who went up there and the news reports are correct in that most of them were um, observant Orthodox Jews or ultra Orthodox Jews. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, uh, they went there to uh, have this break from counting, still counting the Omer, but to have, have the break. So 45 people were killed and undoubtedly, in my humble opinion, that number might grow because there's still so many people in the hospitals. Um, 22 of those 45 were buried before Shabbat. 10 of those 45 were under 18. There were four or five Americans, depending on which report you read, all from the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area. There was some from Argentina, from Canada. Um, a real kind of may arba confota aris. When we talk about ingathering of the exiles, there were Jews from all over the world who were killed, who were celebrating there. Um, I read that two families lost two children, um, which is, uh, you know, there's an expression in Israel, ain't me lim, there are no words. I, I, I don't know what it means to lose a child. I don't know, can't imagine what it means to lose um, two children. And um, I just want to read a little about uh, some reports from Magain David Adom. Um, that, along with Zaka, were the two kind of emergency responses right away. And then, of course, police and army, etc. cetera. Magain David Adon, paramedic Omri Gorga, made the initial call to report the disaster on Mount Meron, alerting the duty officer. On Sunday morning, he recalled the initial, initial hara. Quote, the event happened as I got here. I was a witness from the first moments of the incidents. incident. When asked how you decide who to treat first in an event with so many casualties, Gorga said it was incredibly difficult to do so. Whoever is showing signs of life, we fight for their lives, he said. If someone is not showing signs of life, we have to invest our efforts in other patients who will survive. In the first moments I was there and within minutes, there was an amazing gathering of staff, Gorga said. In my wildest dreams, I didn't think I could gather so much manpower in a matter of seconds in such a crowded place. Thousands of people are running you over, 
and my team had to fight their way to me. I was lifting a blue glove so they could see me while being swallowed in the crowd and they saw my luminous vest and came to me for instructions. I passed the message along that we were talking about an incident with many people injured. We split up the area into sections and started working. I was knocked to the ground and I found myself lying next to a 12 year old boy who was killed. When I tried to get up, the crowd was just running over me and I was lying next to him. The second moment that was scariest for me was when I was talking to my friend Maor, a volunteer paramedic. He wanted to do CPR on an unresponsive child and I told him, I need you to save people that can be saved. He told me, it's a child, I can't. And I told him, we have to save people we can save. It's hard to stop treating children, he said. The dilemma is when to let go, when to say I need to save someone else. And as I've said uh, in one or two services already, um, just to kind of bring it home, because 45 is still kind of a big number, um, we can think about um, this kid, Danny Morris, and I invite you to Google him. You know, he, he's a baby face. He's a young little kid from Bergenfield, um, and which is right next door to Teaneck. Um, he lived like less than two miles from us. Um, 5,000 people attended his funeral in Israel, 5,000 people. And it was not just the Haredi, it was just not the black hat from people, but there were all kinds of fellow Jews and Israelis who attended his funeral. He went to Camp Dora Golding and the director there said his captivating smile and beautiful midot values endeared him to everyone. And the news reporter actually spoke to his mom. How she was able to have any words is amazing, but they really are words of comfort to all of us as she lost her child. My special, sweet, and wholesome Bachor. You were loved by so many. You really had a positive effect on the Jewish people that will never be forgotten. May Danny Morris's memory be for a blessing. Three quick stories. Again, I might have said this at the Minion. One is that uh, the call went out from Gain David Adom that they needed blood. Um, and the main site that was set up was in Tel Aviv. And uh, within hours, that site was closed because so many people donated blood. And let's remember, most of those people in Tel Aviv are secular Jews who were coming to donate. A, uh, uh, an Arab couple who owns a coffee shop outside of Miron um, got the word out that if anyone wanted to come by for a cup of coffee on the house to please stop by. These are fellow citizens who happen to be Arab. Um, and finally, a from couple who owns a takeout place not far from Meron said, anyone who's coming back from Meron who needs help should be able to stop by and pick up a Shabbat dinner again on the house. We are now going to, I, I realize the time, uh, but we're going to try to do it. We're going to share something that the Chazan um, suggested that I share. And... Kazan, uh, no. That was fine. If you went on to that and just click on the tab, that is the YouTube tab once you've shared your screen. There you go. Click on that YouTube tab. Hey, Foza. I'm not finding it. it looks like oh, the third I tab. Am, am. Sorry. Yep. People were going to listen to this for two minutes. Make it full screen, bottom right, button on that. Yeah. <laughs>
May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen but souls in need of healing with Rifua Shalema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. May God who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bring blessing and healing to all who were injured in the Meron uh, incident. All those who suffer illness within our congregational family and all who need refuash lema, may the Holy One mercifully restore them to health and vigor, granting them physical and spiritual well-being together with all others who are ill and strengthen those who tend to them. We hope and pray that healing is at hand and let us all say, Amen. I'm also going to recite the El Male Rachamim um, in English. Um, it's unusual. I don't think I've ever done any program service where we both are praying refuash lima for people who are alive, as well as people who were killed. El male rachamim, shochem bamromim, exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure to the souls of our beloved brothers and sisters in Meron, in northern Israel, suffering in hospitals today, who have gone sorry, who have passed away and who are being buried today and yesterday, who've gone to their eternal home. God, we ask that your loved ones find perfect peace in your tender embrace, their memory enduring as inspiration for commitment to their ideals and integrity in our lives. Let us remember what Donnie's mom said. May their souls thus be bound up in the bond of life. May they rest in peace and let us all say, Amen. 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 And yes, we're going to conclude um, with singing of Hatikva. I Folks, that concludes our mini ceremony. Um, may the people who are in the hospitals um, get Rufuash Lima and a full and speedy recovery. Some indeed are no longer in the hospital, which is a good thing. And uh, may the souls of the 45 who were killed um, and the, uh, have a Aliyah really think about them, think about their families, um, especially thinking about Lagma Omer juxtaposed to this, uh, this tragedy. 
And as Jews, we move on and we say, it's all part of the circle of life, um, as terrible as it is. Um, and I, I specifically wanted to do this before davening as opposed to after davening, because we move on. We're gonna start davening now, um, even though we just had this uh, kind of emotional um, experience. 